hey guys this is samad here from diy king well in today's project video i'm going to show you how a bi-directional speed controller works and later on we are going to build one for ourselves that is built up to the standards of the kit that are available online so have a look at this video in which you can see how useful this little bi-directional speed controller is that can help us to control the speed of a dc motor in either direction that can be useful for different projects as well so have a look at this video conventionally the speed and direction of a dc motor can be controlled by using a dp dt switch in combination with a pulse width modulation speed controller but in that case instantly changing the polarity of the motor through the switch can cause high current drain as well as mechanical stress that is definitely not favorable so the goal here is to control the direction and the rotational speed of the motor using a potentiometer only thus eliminating the need of an extra switch which ensures a secure operation too the heart of this bi-directional speed controller is a cord opm that is an lm324 ic it consists of four sub parts as shown here ic1a serve as the motor control unit IC1B is triangle wave generator whereas IC1C and D are voltage comparators with reference voltages set to ground and VCC respectively. A 100k potentiometer serve as the input for controlling the direction as well as the speed of the motor through the variation in resistance. The midpoint of the pot is set to be off. Rotating the knob to either direction can cause to change the direction and then regulating maximum speed on maximum dials. This also prevents to accidentally changing the direction of the motor while rotating it in a particular direction. Since we have to slow it down first and then change the direction of rotation. The motor control IC drives the output current by switching the pair of N and P channel MOSFETs at a time. When Q3 and Q4 are on, the motor spins in one direction while Q5 and Q6 makes the motor spin in the other direction. Well, enough of the theory for now, as I am going to use MOSFETs that are rated for nearly 50 amps of continuous current drain, so the output current for this speed controller depends upon the quality of the connections or the board that I am going to use in order to connect all these components. So instead of going with perv board, I decided to order my PCBs online and then I came across jlcpcb.com. For the first order, I can get as low as 10 PCBs for $2, which includes the shipment cost to my doorstep. So to order my PCBs, I just uploaded the Gerber files and check out the options that are given below. The link to the schematic and the Gerber files for this PCB will be given in the description below. So be sure to check out their website that is jlcpcb.com so the pcbs arrive within just a week and the quality is outstanding as you can see over here each and every track is laid out so perfectly that it can't be done with any other method all the components that are required for this project can be easily found i've got mine from lcsc.com the link to them will be given in the description below so I've started by soldering the 14 pin socket for LM324 IC. It is always recommended to use a socket for IC which will make the replacement easy in case you blow up one. Now always make sure to place the IC properly onto the socket which is indicated by the small notch at the top of the upper side of IC. Later, I placed all the complementary components onto the PCB that includes diodes, a whole lot of resistors and a bunch of capacitors. So be sure to uh, place them properly, especially the diodes and capacitors on uh, the right positions as well as in right direction. All the resistors that are used for this PCB are rated at quarter watt and that is more than enough. Just double check the value of each resistor and make sure you place them correctly onto the PCB before soldering them.
Now here I'm using a 100k potentiometer which will serve as the input for controlling the speed as well as the direction of the DC motor. The middle point serve as the off position while either direction will serve in order to increase or decrease the speed of the motor. There is only one polarized capacitor so make sure you place it properly onto the PCB. The side with the dotted line indicates the negative lag which is supposed to be connected to the ground track onto the PCB. While the rest of the capacitors are non-polarized so you can place it any way you want. The gates of the MOSFETs are operated by using BC547 transistors. For the output terminals, I'm going to use 4-way block terminals. I'm soldering them before MOSFETs for the convenience of soldering. Moreover, I'm mounting them horizontally so that later I have the room for using larger heat sinks onto the MOSFETs. In order to draw larger amount of currents, I'm going to use N and P channel MOSFETs, specifically an IRF Z44 and an IRF5305 respectively. I've used an aluminium sink to dissipate the excess amount of heat from the MOSFETs. Both of these MOSFETs can handle up to 50 amperes of continuous current drain, which is good enough for most of our applications. Each heat sink carries an N and a P channel MOSFET. Later, make sure you place them in right order onto the PCB, otherwise you will definitely blow up something. Moreover, keep in mind that we are not going to draw current anywhere near 50 amperes. Since the PCB tracks are not larger enough to handle that amount of current, but still we can increase that drain current up to a certain extent by filling the tracks with some soldering wire. Later, I've attached a knob to the potentiometer that makes the dialing easy. So with that being done, our DIY bidirectional speed controller is ready to use. Now to test this speed controller, I'm going to use a 7.5 volt adapter along with a DC motor that is rated for up to 12 volt and 10 amps. I've applied a piece of electrical tape to the shaft to make the direction and rotational speed of the motor clearly visible. The center point serves as the off position while rotating the dial in either direction changes the direction of rotation of motor and its speed too. Later, I've attached a multimeter to the output terminals of the controller and I've noticed that the output voltage increases as I rotate the knob to the extreme positions. While rotating the knob in other direction changes the polarity of the output voltage which in turn changes the direction of rotation of motor. To measure the current that is flowing through the circuit, I've used my multimeter. The maximum current that was noticed during this test was nearly 2.5 ampere, as there is no load onto the motor. So I kept it running for a couple of minutes and then I've noticed that the temperature of the MOSFET was uh, nearly 36 degrees Celsius, just a bit above the room temperature. So they seem to handle the larger currents as well. So guys, if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Moreover, have a look at some of my other project videos as well. And for more upcoming projects, do subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the link just given over here. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you soon in the next one.